Good evening, I'm Greg Sharp, our sports ticker brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Spring football started earlier this morning for the Cornhuskers after the practice. Head coach Matt Rural met with the media and talked about how excited he was to be on the field with his team. Oh yeah, I, mean, I, I couldn't sleep last night. Um, I uh, it was like, I don't know, I probably fell asleep about 1, woke up about 4.15, and that, just out of excitement, you know. You, you heard me talk a couple times about deserving the right. I think the guys have deserved the right to attack spring ball from the work they did in the winter, and so I was anxious to get out there with them today. We will hear more from the coach coming up later this hour. Husker shortstop Bryce Matthews was named today as the league's player of the week. The junior hit 500, had a double, triple, two home runs in the four games played last week. Matthews is the second straight Husker to win the award. Cole Evans garnered the honor last week. Head coach Will Bolt will be in studio next hour for his weekly show. The second round of the NCAA Women's Tournament continued today. Third-seeded Ohio State got a last-second shot to beat. Sixth-seeded North Carolina, 71-69. Later tonight, Indiana will host Miami. The 23rd-ranked Oscar women's gymnastics team was selected today for the NCAA Championships. The Oscars will travel to Denver. March 31st to compete against LSU, Oregon State, and Georgia. The invite breaks a three-year drought for the team in making the championships. Nebraska Rifle had four athletes named as All-Americans. Cecilia Ossie, Madeline Erickson, Emma Rohde, and Vittoria Watts. The Oscars placed sixth at the recent NCAA championships earlier this month. The 1890 Initiative, helping Husker student-athletes navigate name, image, and likeness. To learn more or donate, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for a full night of Sports Highly coming up here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. The 0-2 pitch. Drill to left field. Going back is Jack Calvin Hewitt looking up, and it is gone. Home run. Garrett Anglem and the Huskers have the lead 4-3. to three. And the rebound, Izzy Bourne dribbles out of a double team. Kroll top of the key. Three. You betcha. Off the assist from Izzy Bourne. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are, back for another week of Sports Nightly. Jessica's so happy because spring has finally arrived. So happy. I didn't need to have five layers on, <laughs> my parka, my gloves, and a toboggan on to walk my dog this morning. It was awesome. Yesterday morning, I think we got down to six. Oh, it was very, very cold yesterday. It did warm up a little bit yeah. yesterday, but today is beautiful. I asked you if it was here to stay. You said nope. no. No, nope. it's going to be only 50 tomorrow. It was great being back on campus today because spring break is over. And I was driving through, weaving through students and you know, they cross inside. But a lot of them were wearing shorts out there today. I thought about wearing shorts, but I held off. It's nice of you to say it's great that they're back because I was kind of thinking the opposite because parking's parking. back to being a nightmare again. <laughs> it's tiring, particularly when we come like middle of the day. Yes. It's just impossible to get yes. something right outside of our, our studios. There is so much for us to talk about. We did not have a Friday show. Husker Baseball bumped us off Friday, so a lot to get to. But let's start with, with the spring practice began today. The they went 6 a.m., so everybody was in the building by 5.15. And then afterwards, man, I think I even texted you this. There was a ton of news from Coach Rural today. Some roster attrition, which we've been telling people this is going to happen. He knew it was going to happen. People were panicking about why they are so much over the, the roster limit. And I think you'll continue to see it. It's just, you know, and, and Coach Rural said a couple of the guys, it was their decision to leave too. And he wants to give people the opportunity to see if it's a fit, both for the coaches and for the players. But it's just, uh, it, bottom line, that's how it is. This, the way that things are ran with this staff, it's not going to fit every player. And right. so you knew the more that they went through the offseason and even through spring ball, you're going to see probably more guys. But, you know, it's just a feeling out period at this point. But, um, you know, that's that I think we'll continue to see some guys here or there that that will leave and, and try to find a better fit for them personally. Here is who he identified as guys that are no longer part of the program. Chris Hickman, James Carney, two tight ends, both Nebraska kids. Hickman was from Burke, played high school ball with Nick Henrich. And then James Carney is from Norris, just south of Lincoln. And Tyreek Johnson, who was a transfer from Ohio State, former five-star guy, but just never could get his footing. I think he just he was injured last fall some. He is no longer part of the program. The other big newsworthy thing was the suspension right now of Anthony Grant. 
not off the team, but not suspended. And coach said, nothing serious. We just got to get him pointed in the right direction. Said he's a good kid. It just got to get back on the right track. Again, going back to the expectations for this coaching staff are very, very high. It's they are very. Um, they're going to be hard on you, and they expect you to meet a certain standard. I mean, and, and they expect everybody. They're not going to play favorites with certain guys just because you've been here and because you've played and because you were the leading rusher. I mean, it's you. everybody is held to the same standard. And that is why I talked to Heinrich Carberg today and, you know, Gabe Urban. And, you know, you're seeing, you're, I'm hearing this from, from players that, uh, again and again about how they're going to give everybody a chance and if you come in and you do the right things and you work really hard you're going to be rewarded for that they don't care if you came in as a zero star and weren't recruited or a five star and we're the if you come in and take care of business everybody's going to get the same chance and they hold everybody to those expectations and sometimes I, I think probably it's just a different you know feeling out and for guys to figure out how to manage those expectations and, and what it takes to meet those expectations and, and probably just the case of Anthony Grant and hopefully he gets back on track and, and as Coach Roll said, he's going to have an opportunity to do that. and um, So yeah, I mean, look at a guy like Xavier Betts who, you know, left the program. He's coming back and we're hearing great things yep. about how he's attacking this. Like you can get back on track. It's just a manner, matter of figuring out what's expected of you and delivering on those expectations. I would add Isaiah my guy, Isaiah yeah. Garcia Castaneda, back, and it sounds like he's done pretty well. Yeah. Back. The other guy not on the practice field today, he didn't use the word suspension, was Tommy Hill. Not out there today, but he didn't elaborate on that, but he didn't use the word suspension with Tommy like he did Anthony. And Tommy's kind of been all over the place. And I did notice, and folks, if you want to go pull up Huskers.com, they've revamped the roster there's nobody with a single-digit number. I don't quite – well, I'm going to have to ask that question why that is. They took all the single-digit numbers away. It starts at 10. Jamari Butler, Heinrich Harburg, they're wearing number 10. Then it goes on down from there. So all those numbers are gone. There's also no – nobody listed as a nickel or – and there's nobody listed as an edge rusher. So they've changed some of the terminology for some of those guys as well. Uh, but if you want to go check out and see what everybody's new numbers are, you can go find that at Huskers.com. I also, too, would imagine that, look, it's been a grind. It's a tough time getting up to this point. And now it's fun to get to get out and play football oh, again. Oh, yeah. You know, and you only get 15 practices. So it could even be just a disciplinary thing where you just have to sit out of practice. Because at this point, that's what you are chomping at the bit to do. You right. want to get out on the football field and play some football because you are sick of lifting weights and you just want to play the game that you love to play. That You only get a very short opportunity to actually get to get out there and do. And so... I would maybe, and this is just my speculation that because it was phrased a little bit different, maybe that's part of it too, that you're holding out because you don't get to do the fun stuff here today. That could be. Tommy's also listed, Jessica, back as a, a defensive, defensive back. back. So he started as a DB, started as a DB. Then uh, last fall, midway through, he went over to the offensive side. They tried to find some packages in place for him to work at. He's now back on the defensive side of the ball. There's some other position changes. We'll get into that more with some clips from the coach coming up here in just a little bit. How's your bracket doing? I noticed on the challenge, you're not, you're not that high up, neither am I. No, but I still have two of my four final team, you do? final four teams left. You have your championship team left. Yes, on both my brackets. So it's like it's so crazy because I filled out two brackets. I was telling you one for the with the HAP group, the sales group, and then one with the sports nightly group. And I went and I kind of switched up a few of the picks, and I did it wrong. You know, it's like I picked the wrong ones. And so, anyways, um, it's it, it's going back to what I've I've said from the start is. It's crazy. It's bonkers right now for men's college basketball because there is literally never been more parity. We said it for a while now. That's why we are seeing more of the 16 seeds be more competitive in the last few years. But it's not been even close to where it is right now because of the transfer portal, yep. because of the extra year for COVID. Teams got older. Teams have been more experienced. You can transfer guys and get guys that fit. It's just, it's crazy. And I mean, is there a perfect bra bracket left? I don't think so. I don't think there is. I do think two of the ones look great. Your pick is Houston. They look really good. Yeah. They were dominant in the second half yesterday. And Alabama looks like the real deal as well through two games. Gonzaga looked pretty good at the... They did. You know, their offense is going to be hard for Timmy people. can play. So I have Gonzaga in one and I have Houston in one. You got both of them live. And so. then, but I still, I can't remember who's the other team I have um, with Houston. Um, 
whoever's with them on that side of the bracket, I think I have left. I, I'm out on the top. I had, um, I had Purdue and Baylor on the top. But on the bottom of the Final Four, I have two in left in both of my brackets. I lost Duke, and I, everybody made fun of me the other day. In I, Arizona, I, I right? Fell, fell, Arizona and Duke both uh, bummed out on me. I'm not surprised, and I said this on the air last week, that the Big Ten has not done real well. I did not think the Big Ten was – the Big Ten, I thought, could win games – but not get to the second weekend. And only Michigan State, there's Tom Izzo, who figures out a way in March to get his team to play really well. He does. I mean, there's a reason why they showed a graphic yesterday of all the how many games he's won. And, and he just, and I do think he's got some athletes that fit a little bit more of the style of play that you're seeing teams. I think it's hard sometimes for the Big Ten teams. It's kind of can be slow and physical. And then you go to the Big 12, and, and I've talked a lot with Nate Linzer and, and uh, Coach Hoiberg about this. Just with the Big 12, it's, it's fast, it's, it's uh, up pace, it's very, you know, up pace, it's scoring, high scoring, high octanes. And sometimes it's kind of a, a grinded out battle in the Big 10. And they had a big discussion on the um, TNT after one of the games last night talking about the Big 10 and why they, the lack of success. And maybe it's the stylistic, this, stylistically, how the Big 10 plays doesn't really fit. It's not a good fit for making a run in the NCAA tournament. I think sometimes it's hard to match up with those teams with a bunch of really good guards. I just didn't think there was a uh, – Purdue was an elite-type team, and they got upset. They couldn't hit the three. But after, after, outside of Purdue, and they won the league by a couple of games, I thought it was a big drop-off, and that's kind of what we saw. Not the case for the women. Three Big Ten women teams already to the Sweet 16. I mentioned Ohio State played today. One uh, wasn't quite a buzzer beater. It was close. There was about two seconds left when, when they made a shot to break a tie with North Carolina. Yesterday, Iowa moved through. Also, Maryland is into the Sweet 16. Indiana plays later tonight. Interesting, Indiana plays Miami. Their men's teams played each other last night. Huh. Miami and Indiana men played last night, so now the women are playing. Isn't that crazy? That, that could be you a match fun up. matchup with the Cavender yeah. twins. You know, they're big yep. in um, women's basketball. I think only one of them really plays a bunch, but, um, you know, Miami, I think, who do they, they upset somebody, right, or, or beat somebody. They beat Oklahoma State. From the Big 12, right. who the Big 12 came in with so a, their, their win. women's teams. And that was their win, yeah. So, uh, but, the, yeah, I mean, we said it all along. I, I argue that, like, why the Big 10 men were getting more teams in than the Big 10 women. Because the Big 10 women, to me, have more heavy hitters that are going to make deep runs or right. should make deep runs. Right. Uh, Husker women still alive in the WNIT. 20-point win yesterday over Northern Iowa. You were on the call on that on, on BTN+. Plus. They await a game that's about ready to tip off in Lawrence, KUMU tonight. Yes, that was fun last night. I mean, not fun. Sam Hybe going down. Hate that. I mean, she had just such a great performance in that first round of the NI WNIT, 25 points. You can tell she's really... Um, really embracing this final opportunity. I think it just sometimes when it clicks and you know, okay, this is it. And so uh, it just is heartbreaking to see her go down. But then I think it motivated this team. And, and now we've seen that happen when Allison Weiner went down, how the team rallied behind that after she went down. They came back and beat Kansas in that triple overtime win. And then, you know, I, I, that's what happened last night. They were, they were motivated to play for Sam. That was big for them. They wanted to go out and do it for her. And that was a really good performance that they put together last night. They shot it a lot better than they have. They took better care of the basketball. Didn't have a turnover in the first half, which has been an issue for this team. Turned it over a little bit more in the second half. And they defended really well against a team that has shooters all over the floor. And even J.B. Hagedorn, who uh, was a Nebraska women's basketball alum, was on the call with me, said, could have some matchup problems because of how they can stretch the floor with so many shooters. And, you know, with uh, how... They might have an issue guarding Alexis Markowski, but Alexis Markowski, as he bore, might have a trouble guarding their guard. So how does that work? Well, boy, they locked down defensively, did Nebraska, and that was a big part of why you and I, one of the best shooting teams, one of the best offenses in the country, Nebraska was able to lock them down. And they, they missed a lot of shots, but also Nebraska caused it to be a lot tougher on them. So it was a great performance, and I think... You know, now that they talk about the dream changing, and I think now that they are fully locked in on that, I think they are really pretty motivated to try to make this make this pretty special run. So we'll wait. The winner of Kansas-Missouri tips off at 6.30 tonight down 
in Allen Fieldhouse. 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to be a part of the program. It is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. We're going to hear from the head football coach. Met with the media today. He's so fun to listen to. I just, I, I, I could sit there and listen to the guy, and I think he's enjoying himself talking to the media right now here in Nebraska, and that may not last, but it's, I'm loving the fact that it's going on right now. So we'll hear from him here in a few minutes. Jessica had a chance to catch up with Jazz Shelley after the Huskers win yesterday. We'll hear from her, and then hour two, it's our baseball show. The head coach, Will Bold, will be in studio. We're back with a practice report, spring football practice. We'll do that coming up next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. You ain't seen nothing. This is Ford Truck Month, America. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight. Like the Ford F-150 or the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger pickups. So get into Ford Truck Month and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock and ready for delivery today. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynix has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Your neighborhood is more than blocks of buildings. It's the people who live there that make it special. At Union Bank & Trust, we're not just creating home loans. We're making neighbors. We're not just small business lenders. We're small business shoppers. We don't just live in your community. We help you build it. Because our people are your people. Visit ubt.com slash neighbor to learn more. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. 
Find your next truck during truck season at Woodhouse Chevy. Whether you are shopping in-store or online, we provide a stress-free, streamlined process that's tailored to meet your needs. Save during truck season and receive 0% APR for 36 months plus $1,000 cash allowance and no monthly payment for 90 days on the 2022 Chevy Silverado 1500. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy in-store or online at woodhousegm.com. WBC, CD for details, expires 4 3 As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Husker fans, don't miss your chance to get a first look at new head coach Matt Rule and the 2023 Husker football team. Be in Memorial Stadium on Saturday, April 22nd for the annual Nebraska football red and white spring game presented by FNBO. Tickets are on sale now and are only $10 when purchased in advance and $20 on the day of the game. To secure your tickets today or for more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cooney with you here on a Monday night. The head coach met with the media bright and early this morning. It was a little bit after 8 a.m. They got up and got going early today. They're not going to go that early the rest of spring practice, but they did today. And the coach was excited about being out there with his football team and then he made a comment about how he thinks he has a very coachable team here's the head coach well you know for me it's the first time i've seen like these quarterbacks throw a ball you know it's the first time i've seen some of these guys like i've seen them move but do football things um you know practice is kind of chaotic so i really can't assess much until i go back and watch the tape but um i'll just continue to say like they're you know i don't know how if we're good or not but we're a very coachable team um, and so I, I think a lot of it for us right now is about just establishing standards. We want to be a team that, you know, doesn't beat itself. Like, we want to be a team that goes out and executes. Um, and, you know, for me, that's, you know, everyone was in the building by 515. You know, uh, everyone was dressed appropriately. Everyone um, knew their assignments. And so um, that's a great start. You know, if we, can, if we can establish that basis, that standard of, hey, we're all going to be on time, we're all going to practice hard, we're all going to know our jobs, then the town will take over. That was going back to what I was saying in the first segment, addressing some of the guys that might not be a fit for this program. The standards, there's, there's a set of standards that they expect everyone to meet, and everyone better meet those. And, and, you know, just because you're a certain player and you don't do it, it, everybody's treated the same. There's the same expectations, and they've said that from the coaching staff on down to the players. It is literally everybody in that program is held to the same standards and the same expectations. I didn't pull the clip that he talked about the quarterbacks. He said, he goes, this is as good a quarterback room as I've been around. And then he did go say, Casey's not throwing, Logan's not throwing. They both had labrum surgeries in the off season, but he's impressed with the other guys and that would be Chuba, that would be Sims, that would be Heinrich. Yeah. And Torres would be in that batch as well. And so I think he feels like they've got some ability in that room. I didn't go to practice. I saw a few of the video clips because I was working on a video piece. I can tell you Chuba made some really good throws that I saw. So I think you know, probably, and he's going to get a lot of opportunities. And that's what Heinrich talked about, too. With those two guys being out, there's going to be opportunities. you got to make the most of them. It's going to be a competitive room, just like every other position group. It's, there's a lot of bodies out there right now that are all trying to earn their playing time and uh, earn their right on the field. All right. Uh, he, he, he loves practice. He's mentioned that a couple different times. It's also a chance for them 
to see maybe guys play some different positions because again they didn't they aren't inheriting a good chunk of this team have they brought in a lot of new faces absolutely but they've inherited a lot of guys who maybe are a better fit in their systems at a different spot so here he is talking about the process of practice everyone always focuses on the scheme like you know there's been three four teams that win the national championship there's been four three teams four two five teams. i mean you know to me it's um it's really about how you do what you do. So the standards of the way that we practice, the way that we strip the ball, the way we move from drill to drill, those are the ones that are that, that are important to me. So, like we literally, like I, I take notes. You guys will be at practice, I'm assuming, at some point. I take notes the whole time on my phone, and then we go in and we meet, and I say, now let's talk about this. Tell me why we're doing that. Um, it's really important that we go through this process now in the spring. So when we hit the fall, there is no gray area you know that, that's the worst thing you can give players is gray area it's got to be concrete and you have to be really humble as coaches you have to sometimes say you know what guys we've been coaching it this way we're going to switch it to this because we think it'll be better for us so there's multiple ways to do things we just want to make sure we're giving our guys the best chance i think that's why he's assembled a group that is okay with doing that with changing things up what whatever is fit and and to me that's some of the best offensive coordinators are ones that are change their their schemes, their systems to fit their personnel best. How, what are the best ways for you to exploit the defense? And so I think that's where Coach Rule has put together this versatile group that can manage maneuvering around if they need to change things up or fix things or tweak things however they need to tweak them, whether it be offense, defense, within a practice, within overall the system, to be able to fit this program and this team best. And I think everybody's just all in on the mission and, and a bunch, like you said, a humble guys of whatever they need to do to, to make it all work. He worked that word process in there too. Loves to talk about that. Couple of position changes. Janarian Bonner, and I can't remember, he's got a nickname and I can't remember the nickname now. You remember? I remember Coach Joseph mentioning Janarian Bonner's nickname. But he's moved from wide receiver to tight end. This Janarian was a really good get for Nebraska two years ago from the Atlanta area. So he redshirted last year, but he is a big bodied guy. And Coach Rural's excited about it. He goes, he he can we can move him around. He can be a chess piece that we can slide around. So that's one position change. Brody Tagiola, who came in as a tight end, they've moved to defense, defensive line. Uh, they think he can bulk up enough and carry some weight. So those are a couple of small position changes. The running back room, and this is where he will get into the announcement about Anthony Grant. He likes the running back room. Let's listen. You know, we, we're always going to preach a fourth quarter shutout. And fourth quarter shutouts are helped by the offense when you can have 75 yards rushing in the fourth quarter. So those are things that we believe in. And I think Gabe has had a sensational camp. A.J.'s got a ton of talent. Um... AJ, you know, obviously played a little bit, then got hurt last year. I'm excited to see what he can do. Ramir Johnson, you know, when I went go back and watch the tape over the last two years, he's a guy that consistently flashed to me. He's healthy. He's doing a really nice job. Um, and I'm just trying to think uh, uh, if there's a, oh, and then I think Emmett's had a really good spring. Anthony Grant's not with us right now. I've suspended Anthony um, uh, until uh, uh, such time as I feel like he's ready to rejoin the team, working on just academics and just general things with him. Nothing, nothing bad other than just sort of our standards as a program. So Anthony's not practicing with us uh, today, and that'll be day by day. Good kid, just have to get him in the, going in the right direction. I mean, not surprised I've heard Gabe Irvin's name from – I think January 1st, <laughs> you know, um, I've heard it from players, his teammates, I've heard it from coaches. I've, he's been taking care of his, he, again, talked to him today. You could just tell how excited, how much confidence he has, um, a new sense of, um, you know, getting a, another opportunity. He's also, you know, this is a guy that, how much have we heard, even with the previous coaching staff, Coach Held, Ryan Held, I know recruited him. He's a guy, when he was a true freshman, did not maneuver like a true freshman. He's very He's very detail-oriented. The staff is very detail-oriented, so I think it fits really well for him. So he's really thriving in this and the high expectations and, and the, um, you know, just all the things that go along with building, what they're building right now within this program. The, one of the most asked questions you and I got all last fall, where's Ramir? Yeah. And he brought it up right there. I, I don't know, and I don't know what happened. Why? I know Ramir had some injury situations, some nagging things last year. But I think it was a great question. We never really got a great answer last fall, why he wasn't playing more. I don't know whether Mark Whipple didn't think he fit his style. I don't, I don't know. But 
There again, you hear the coach Brent mention Ramir. And you want to talk about probably the running back that has the best capability of ripping off a big play? It's got to be Ramir, right? I think so. I mean, maybe AJ. AJ teased us with the before yeah. yard last year. Yeah, I just I think with just how quick Ramir is and then speed, if he gets loose, good luck tracking him down. Yep. You know, so which they said Gabe Irvin was the fastest guy on the team. So right, I mean, or one of I think did he say one or two? One of yeah. yeah. So um, I yeah I just I think that's a. Emmett is a name too, and he's a guy that's been great you know, athlete, uh, he, and he's been all over showing up at every sporting event, which was part of that competition. You know, I, I think he's really thriving in this as well. Again, this is our practice report brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. All right, uh, there's a guy on the team that's not happy with the head coach, and he's in the tight end room. Let's listen. Yeah, Fedoni's mad at me right now because I'm limiting what he's doing. You know. Um, and, you know, he's completely healthy, but I'm just going to limit him all spring. You know, I mean, he's we got to get him to the season, you know. And uh, I, I always believe it takes a long time for an ACL to truly heal. So I'm kind of, you know, picking my spots. So he's, he's mad, but that's what I love about him. He's competitive. Um, uh, you know, Gilbert's kind of learning as he goes, right? I mean, he's a big physical kid. Um, we've been really happy, really happy with, you know, Borkacher and Lindemeyer. Those guys have played a lot of football, right? Um, the AJ's done a nice job. You know, Chase has, he's learning, Chase Androff. Uh, uh, James Carney's no longer on the team as well. He's left the team. <laughs> Thomas is mad. It does not surprise me. <laughs> and I wonder when they had that conversation because when I talk to him, you know, he's like all ready I'm to good. go. I can do everything. I'm full, blo a full go, ready to go, 100%. Not going to be held back at all. I feel the best I've ever felt, you know? So it must have happened recently. <laughs> but it does not surprise me that he's, you know, mad about it. But also, I understand the logic behind it. He needs to make it to the season. I, he, he how many times have that. we heard that? Yeah. Now the new coaching staff is saying it. Matt Rule raved about the first time he saw him moving. Has a chance to be a big part of this offense. you got to get him to a point where he can make an impact on the offense. Yeah. So, and it is, and even just, you know, again, coming from somebody who's torn two ACLs, it, it is, even though you're released, it's just a process. And it, and especially for somebody like that who just wants to play so badly and probably wants to go 120 miles per hour, you just cannot do that you've got to be smart about it and so as that's competitive as he is i completely understand where coach rule is coming from on that deal so there's, there's kind of the highlights of it just a lot of really good stuff in there from the head coach they will practice tomorrow and then again on thursday and we'll hear from the coordinators after thursday's practice so looking forward to that wednesday is pro day so the guys who are trying to become professional football players will have a chance to test do all those type of things that they do at the combine in indianapolis they'll be if not all, most of the NFL franchises will have somebody here to do all that, and you're going to go watch a little bit of that on, on Wednesday. I know Garrett Nelson's back in town. I don't know what Trey Palmer will do. He tested so well in Indy. He may not want to step on that scale again, uh, but he may do some things. So uh, we'll, we'll have a pulse of that and give you some of that on Wednesday night show. My guess. Trey wants to run, but his people will tell him not to. Why would you, though? Because I think Trey will probably think that he could run fast. Yeah. Just knowing him True. and hearing and talking with him multiple times about that, and he's a track guy, and I guarantee you he probably thinks he could run faster. Yeah. <laughs> and so he probably is trying to talk him into running, and they're probably saying, no, you're good. You do well. Uh, I mean, but they'll all be here, and they'll still want to meet with teams. Like, yeah. teams come in, and they have, they're able to have extensive conversations. Maybe they didn't get to have at the Combine. And we are going to have one Jeremiah Searle sighting, hopefully, what? as well. He'll be back in the building. He's wow. been a ghost for a while. He's reappearing on Wednesday. Goodness. Okay. Very good. All right. That's Wednesday, so we'll have a full recap of all that for you on, on Wednesday night's program. That is our first spring football practice report. Uh, brought to you again by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890Nebraska.com. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to be part of the program with a call or a text. We're back to uh, answer some of those comments, and we'll hear from Jazz Shelley, who was one of the heroes in the Huskers' victory yesterday over Northern Iowa. All that's coming up next. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Nickelode Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Nickelode Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. 
It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Nebraska Innovation Campus creates partnerships between business and the University of Nebraska. Partners lease office space, laboratories, pilot plants, and greenhouses, all centrally located with easy access to University of Nebraska talent and resources. Nebraska Innovation Campus, creating spaces and culture that inspire. Learn more at innovate.unl.edu. Swings of this pitch and launches it to left, and that ball is gone. Grand slam, home run, Bryce Matthews. Breezy day in Manhattan. Hey, Husker fans, tune in tomorrow with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin as Nebraska baseball takes on Creighton in a midweek matchup. Pre-game coverage begins at 5.30 p.m. on the Huskers radio network. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. To win the game, you got to have more strength. You got to be tougher. You got to be reliable. You got to want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. 
Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here. It is a Monday night on our text line. Matt and Raymond said, hey, the one thing that I really enjoyed was the phrase when Coach says, we're not going to beat ourselves. Yes. That's a lot of it. Yes, and going back to that discipline part of it, I mean, that's, that's where all, all of this, there's a rhyme or reason to why they do the things that they do. And setting that standard, because that is going to come to fruition on the football field and doing the right things and making sure you're disciplined on the football field when it counts. Bill in Portland said, did the coach say anything specific about the possibility of Heinrich Harburg moving to a different position? I don't think Matt Rural did. You talked to Heinrich today. We just talked about him dunking the basketball and throwing the basketball, or th dunking the basketball and throwing the football. So I think right now he's attacking it as an opportunity because there's, you know, there's some guys out. He's attacking the opportunity to sure. be the quarterback. I don't know where that rumor came from or why that started, but I mean, I don't know if that was something that was alluded to at some point by this coaching staff, but to me, I talked to him and it sounds like he's full on going with quarterback. Maybe eventually he'll change, but right now it's quarterback. Let's head to the phones, out to Carney. Greg, you're up next on Sports Sunday. Good evening. Hey, folks. Good evening. Uh, got a quick question, tongue in cheek. Uh, does Coach Rule allow white socks at practices? Um, I'll. Uh, Coach Prime with the buffs. Oh, <laughs> take off of or, Dion, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that a punishable offense? Yeah, I, I, uh, think, yeah I, I, I think this staff is well aware of the attention that's being made in Boulder, Colorado, because we play them, you know, Greg, right off the bat this and year. And we're competing with oh, the ones absolutely. in recruits here in yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. And uh, I'm on record that uh, I'm not a big fan of Coach Prime. Uh, Change the subject. Uh, was there any update on Sam Hybe's injury? I didn't catch the first part of the show. I think she's done for the the season. It sounds like it was. There was no. I don't know. I don't want to speculate on what the injury was, um, but it sounds like. And you'll hear Jazz talk about it here in a minute. It sounds like uh, she's she's on crutches at the end Ugh. and came back and never. You know, had a. Basically, it's changed clothes. was in street clothes. So it doesn't look promising that she'll return. Doggone it. That's a sad, sad way for her career to come to an end. Greg, appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com. Member FDIC. You did get a chance after yesterday's victory to talk with Jazz. Yeah, it was a fun game. A lot of people contributed. A lot of people did a lot of good things. So I uh, chatted with Jazz after the win. All right, well, congratulations. How much fun was that one? That was awesome. Was a good one today. What went into you guys being ready to play? I mean, that's a high-octane offense, and you guys seem to be locked in defensively from the start. Yeah, that was definitely the key for us. So they can light it up from three-point on. They have incredible bigs, so I think just trying to limit their touches inside but also limit their penetration. I think we did a really good team effort on the defensive end today. You know, with um, Sam Ivey's the leader, the heartbeat of this team, when she went down, you guys seemed to play inspired. How much did you want to do it for her once she left the game? Oh, it's everything. I mean, Sam's our super senior, and she, so many people on this team look up to her, and um, we played our hearts out for her. It took us a little bit to get back into the game because, obviously, she's our floor general, and we really miss her. And, um, yeah, the rest of this uh, next part of the season is going to be for her. You guys uh, heated up from the outside today. How good was it to see it go in again uh, for you guys? Like it, like, it really has been all season. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit inconsistent for us, but it was awesome to see it go through the net today. And I think we did a really good job of getting it inside, outside, and um, really finding people on the three-point line. So it's credit to everyone on the team. When Sam goes out, Kendall Moriarty, how big was she for you guys today? Huge. We needed people to step up today, and she's one of them. Callan did an incredible job as well. I think they were awesome, um, and we're going to need that for the rest of the season. 
Even Maggie played some good defense too. How much are you seeing those freshmen grow with every time they're out here and, and getting this experience in the postseason? Yeah, I mean we really we really need them, and it's really <laughs> tough ask for a freshman to come in and do some stuff that they're able to do, and we're really proud of them, and we just encourage them along the way. But the postseason is so weird where you, you don't know who you're going to play or who to, how to prepare. Uh, how has this team approached kind of what's up in the air and when you're going to play and who you're going to play and just being ready? Yeah, it's definitely a quick turnaround. But, I mean, we have our own cues that we do on the defensive end that we try and lock into, play uh, Gator style of defense. And um, we're just really honed in on that and just focus on ourselves as well. How about Izzy, too, these last two games? Double-doubles, she's been a beast on the boards and scoring as well. I mean, how big has her role been? Yeah, Izzy's been the most consistent player all season, and it's incredible to have her come out here and just, just play like she does. And she's an incredible person to play with. On like Everyone loves her and everyone looks up to her, and she's just, she's just working hard all the time, so it's awesome. I ask you about the crowd yet again. I know it's not a surprise, but third largest crowd. I mean, for the postseason, what did that mean to you guys to run out here and see this kind of crowd? It still surprises me. It is insane here and just so lucky. And them to come on short notice is absolutely incredible. So we're really thankful for them and we're going to need them the rest of the way. There were a couple times either you guys needed a run, needed a stop, or got on a big run that they really got into it. How much did they, they push you guys in certain moments today? Oh, we feed off of them, and, and it's incredible. They know they know exactly when to get high for us. They know exactly when they need to get louder, and they're, they're just an incredible fan base, and we're very lucky. You know, a lot of people have asked me how motivated is this team to be in, in the WNIT, and it seems like you guys are really motivated and really hungry to, to go on a run in this. How is this team approaching it? Yeah, I would say a lot of teams in the NIT don't want to be in the NIT, obviously, but I think that we still have this hunger and this drive to, to prove people what we can do, and I think that our team is continuing to believe in each other and just have fun, and it's really paying off right now. Last thing, just uh, what goes into you guys being ready to maybe win another one and then keep this run going? I would say continue to like believe in ourselves, and we're going to have quick turnarounds to so just stay honed in on the on the scout and um, what we can do and what we can produce. And I'm just yeah excited for the team. Appreciate it. Cool. Thank you. So there, yeah, but there's Jazz Shelley. It took everybody to get that done, but I, I absolutely think they're motivated. I, I keep getting that question: How much does this team? want to play in this being that the expectations were that what they were going into the season but i think they are absolutely dialed in to making a run here in the wnit what's a ku missouri update it 15, was nine, is it is now oh, i just lost it uh let me see here 18 11 for right at the end of the first quarter kansas up on missouri oscars get the winner of that game folks buckle up put the phone down it's a reminder from the ndot highway safety office we're back to wrap up hour one next Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Bring even more action to your drive when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Buick GMC. From dependable SUVs to durable trucks, we have something for everyone. Drive with purpose in the 2023 GMC Terrain or discover just how tough the GMC Sierra 1500 can be. Plus, receive no monthly payments for 90 days on your next GMC vehicle. Explore our current inventory in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. WC, CP, details expires for other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. 
More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision making you expect from a family owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the Cornerstone difference. Bank on a solid foundation. Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Loan subject to approval. Time for us to see what's on tap. Presented by Bud Light, Husker Baseball will be up in Omaha. Charles Schwab Field tomorrow night to take on the Creighton Blue Jays. It'll be a 6 o'clock first pitch, 5.30 for pregame coverage. Husker Softball will have their home opener on Wednesday against Iowa State, 4 o'clock at Bolin, 3.45 for pregame coverage here on the HRN. And we know the women's basketball team will play this week. We don't know when, where, or against who yet, although Kansas is leading in that matchup with Missouri. The Huskers get the winner of that game. That is what is on tap, presented by Bud Light. Is Creighton as big of a rival in baseball as it is in basketball? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. We've had some big-time crowds for those games down through the years. Probably won't be tomorrow night. It'll be a little chilly. The second time we play them up there in May, it usually draws. You well couldn't over. change the schedule to play today? Wow. Well, the head coach will be here next hour. We'll see why <laughs> you couldn't move that around a little bit. But, uh, yeah, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, Huskers and the Blue Jays tomorrow tomorrow night. Didn't want to mention wrestling. Congrats to Mark Manning and the wrestling team. They finished eighth in the country for all Americans. Didn't finish as strong as they started. I know they had a tough night session Friday night that got them off track a little bit, but still a really good year. Yeah, and I think Brock Hardy got hurt, and I just, I think it was hard for them to bounce back. They had a lot of momentum and probably put a lot into making those uh, quarterfinal matches and then just probably had a little bit of a letdown, but a lot of those guys coming back got great experience. It's also different wrestling at the NTAs for the first time, and a lot of those guys were, so I think they got good experience, and they'll be able to carry that over, and I'll bet Peyton Robb comes back on a mission. I'll bet he will be yeah, fired up. I think he will be. Silas had, a, I think, a real learning experience. One, he won the Big Tens, which was huge for him, but then I think he kind of learned a lot going to Tulsa this year for that, and then you get Ridge Lovett back at 149. You really build the depth of your team just by adding him back in that one weight class. Yeah, you got to replace 125 and, and Mikey Labriola, but other than that, everybody back, and I probably have some other guys redshirting along with Ridge that they're probably pretty excited about. Next year, NCAA Wrestling, Kansas, Kansas City. City, right? Yeah. Very close. Very close. Also, them. shout out to Nebraska Women's Gymnastics mm -hmm. back in the postseason for the first time since 2019. Yeah, I mentioned that in the ticker. So good for them. They uh, finished, uh, I think they were sixth in the Big Tens that took place over the weekend. They'll be headed to Denver on the 31st of this month. No show tomorrow with baseball. We're back with a full show on Wednesday. Again, Pro Day is Wednesday during the day. Jessica did talk to a couple of the current Husker players. We'll hear from them on Wednesday night's show as well. Our Sports Highly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you are looking for. One hour in the books. Last thing I got, we had a text came in from uh, saying saying that you're going to not beat yourself and do, doing it are two very different things. I would like to take that approach that we're not just talking anymore, that we show up and do it on game day. That's the plan. That's what this staff wants to get done on game days. Absolutely. If they get asked about it, he's got to talk about it. Yeah, right? yep, absolutely. Good hour. Head coach Will Bolt next. Come on back. up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe healthcare should be personal because knowing your provider personally 
makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. The rebellious 15-year loan, the here for laundry 20-year loan, and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri.
This is the Husker Baseball Show on the Huskers Radio Network with head coach Will Bolt. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. First pitch to Josh. Breaking ball hammered to left. That is absolutely crushed. Way out of here over the hitting facility in left field. There goes the run of the pitch. Hammered into right center field. That's a gapper. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Carry B waved home. He's going to score. Anderson pumping for two. Not stopping there. Digging for three. The relay throw is not in time. An RBI triple for Anderson. And the Huskers lead it 3 to nothing. The 0-2 pitch from Garza. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Four scoreless for Slim here in Mobile. And it's another 1-2-3 inning. The 0-2 pitch. Drill to left field. Going back is Jack Calvin Hewitt looking up, and it is gone. Home run. Garrett Anglin and the Huskers have the lead 4-3. to three. This pitch, Walsh cranks one to deep left center field. Hines back to the track, to the wall. It is gone. Will Walsh gets one out of here to the deepest part of the park. Shea comes set. The 1-1 pitch. Little bouncer to third. Carey up with it. Fires to first. In time. And the Huskers have beaten number seven Vanderbilt. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to our Monday edition with the, the head baseball coach, Will Bolt, with us for the entire hour. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, 402 402- 413-2400 is the number. We're going to be having a little a trivia contest brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery tonight. Uh, we're some scratch tickets, so we're going to have a little trivia contest that we'll be using our text line for that, so get ready for that later on in the hour. Huskers getting ready to play Creighton uh, tomorrow night up in Omaha. Weird, wild, wacky weekend. You had to move a series south. You got games in, and you took a series from Nichols. You had to like the fact that that happened. Yeah, yeah, it was just it was spring break and just moving parts with with the schedule and the weather and everything else. It was good. We you know we're scheduled to play was it, I was supposed to be five games, just a four gamer with Nichols and right. one with with Omaha and, and only ended up playing three games. But looked like it may only be two for a while with Nichols and so um, you know good to take the series. Obviously disappointing uh, not to finish that sweep off uh, on Sunday, but um, you know we're gonna be back at it this week. You were kind of in the Sunday game, you're kind of swimming upstream. You got into an early hole and you would kind of get close and then they would push it back out. It just never could get over a hump in that ball game. Yeah, <clears throat> kind of chasing runs early in that one. Um, Garza wasn't real sharp. They were give them a lot of credit. They had a great approach going. I mean, every seemed like every hit they had was oppo, middle of the field, really good swings. Um, just came out really aggressive because Michael's t- typically around the zone and you know he he was he was behind the count a little bit but when he threw it over the plate they were just ready to hit and uh, yeah we, we got back in the game made it a one-run game loaded the bases in the sixth seventh and eighth innings finally punched three across Matthews had a big hit there but um, yeah just weren't, weren't able to um, you know chase those runs all the way back to get on top Ben and I said in pregame we thought they might have a little vigor to them because they, they, they got embarrassed. You embarrassed them Friday. And then they had a day to just sit on that. You, had a, you, probably, you, and you probably knew that, too. You were going to see a motivated group. Yeah, going into it for sure. They, they're a well-coached team. Uh, coach Mike Silva, the head coach there, he, he's, a, he's a guy from the Northeast. Like, he, he's, a, he's a no-nonsense guy, and, and he's very much been around a lot of really good, good baseball programs. And he, he actually told me pregame, he's like, he goes, that didn't sit well with me how that game went. He goes, you guys just put it on us. And he didn't necessarily feel like his guys competed, you know, the way that he wanted them to. So you understand that they probably had a pretty good, pretty strong message there and a full day to sit on it as well. And they responded in a big way. And like I said, I mean, we, we didn't play a perfect ball game. Um, I was proud of the way we fought. Uh, but in the end, you know, giving up 10 runs, you know, Figure, figure you, you probably won the game if you score seven, um, but weren't able to, to finish that thing off. Friday, Emmett's been fantastic for you all of the whole first month of the season, and Jace has done a, a really good job on Saturday. Sunday's been an issue where you, you had Caleb in there, you go with Michael Garza yesterday. Where do you sit now as you look at that final game of a weekend series? Yeah, you're right. I mean, Emmett, Emmett and Jace have been outstanding, and Jace was on short rest this past week, so we really we limited him about 70 pitches. Got us through five innings, but I think Slim Garza will be fine. Um, you know, we started him on Tuesday on a pitch limit, knowing that that Sunday game was definitely a possibility that we could bring him back because the the, the schedule was originally going to have Thursday through Sunday. 
So another one of our starting candidates, Jackson Brockett, was going to start the Thursday game. Um, so we bumped him, moved him to the pen so we could flip him to Tuesday so we can start the Creighton game. So, so knowing that Garza was probably going to start twice last week, um, that's why we short him on Tuesday. Um, you could just tell he was a little soggy on Sunday, just didn't quite have the the delivery wasn't as crisp as it normally has been, the tempo and the delivery, and, and he was leaving some balls out arm side, and then when he tried to come back over the plate, it was just a little flat. So I think he'll be fine. He's been really consistent for us, uh, you know, for the most part this season, and um, he's a guy who's going to continue to get those opportunities. He's been a weekend starter in yeah. his career, right? Yeah, he's, he was a Friday night guy at Incarnate Word. Um, <clears throat> was a Sunday guy earlier in his career. He was a closer. He was the Friday night starter. So he's got that experience. And I, I kind of went that way because conference, we're ready. It's here. It's this weekend's your first conference series with a good Illinois team coming in. And I think you'd kind of like to be kind of set with that going into conference play. Yeah, and, and I think that that'll, that'll probably be the case there. Where we'll, we'll go ahead and roll those same three starters out. And uh, with Brockett starting on Tuesday, he'll be available out of the bullpen on the weekend. And, uh, yeah, you just you want to solidify that. And, and there may be a situation where we leave Sunday open, where we feel like that – you know, maybe we need to use Garza out of the pen at some point in time, and then we just kind of piece it together on Sunday. And you know, it, it just it's, it'll be pretty fluid. But if we, I think, if given the opportunity to do it, I think Garza is up for the task for sure. Folks, do you want to support Oscar student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. It's our baseball show for the week. The head coach with us for the entire hour. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment, or you can fire off a text if you prefer to do that. The league announced a couple of hours ago, Bryce Matthews named the Conference Player of the Week. Back-to-back -back weeks, you've had that. Cole Evans last week. Bryce today, he's played really well. He's played a, a outstanding brand of baseball the entire year. I mean, just being a team captain as a junior, um, you know, hitting lead off for us, playing shortstop for us, um, the numbers he's putting up is are phenomenal, and he's done a good job at shortstop. Really good job of leading the team. Um, had some huge hits for us. I mean, driving in a ton of runs. I think he leads our team in RBI. He does. Yeah. Leads our team in slugging percentage. Um, just a guy that you're, we're so fortunate to have. Um, not only for his physical ability, just his makeup, and what he's about has just been a, a, a huge um, asset to our team. I think he leads you in stolen bases, homers, and RBIs. That and then hitting leadoff mm. and playing shortstop. Sounds like a five-tool player to me. Sure does. And you had a guy like that two years ago. The That's only right. thing he doesn't do that Spencer did, yeah. he doesn't pitch. Yeah, we might have to see if, if we can <laughs> throw him in there. Um, give us an update on Garrett Anglum. It's been a couple weeks now, and I think you thought it would be a two- or three-week deal. Is he getting close? He's getting close. He, he would have been available in an emergency situation, potentially, uh, to pinch hit. The problem is he just can't sprint. He just can't sprint yet. And... You just got to be awfully careful with those um, soft tissue injuries. And um, I think probably by this weekend, he's going to feel like he's ready to go. I don't know that that'll be the smart play just yet. Um, you know, the other thing we're working against this a little bit has been the cold weather. You know, it just it's not easy to kind of get loose in that weather. And, you know, it, sometimes your legs feel like they're good, and then you just don't realize that maybe it's not as good as you think. And... Um, so I, I would anticipate, again, maybe we can get him in in a pinch hitting scenario at some point this week, um, maybe DH by the weekend. I mean, if everything goes perfect, um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll kind of play it by ear. I would imagine it's still probably at least a week out. Cold weather has certainly been an issue since you since you've been back home. You had a ten game home stand that ended up you only got ended up getting five of them at home, and you had to play the other five. We got a couple banged and played three in Manhattan. How much do you are you concerned, and what precautions do you take for your pitchers' arms with cold weather? Yeah, I mean we have um, the real feel rule uh, in Big Ten play. The has got to be twenty eight at the start of the game now. There's times where it's it's above that, and then it gets below that during the game. Um, it, it's a big concern. Uh, we 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 take it seriously. Uh, that Thursday, you know, there was a lot of rain. Uh, I think that was a big part of it, but it was also bitterly cold as the as the front started to come through. So, you just got to be careful. There's no exact number, though. I mean, it's it's not like. Science tells you that 29 degrees is much safer than 27. Real feel. It's just. 
Maybe just a matter of feel, how a guy, you know, has bounced back from his last outing, you know, just those type of things. But we definitely take that into account. Do you put extra padding on them when they're in the dugout between half innings? Do you put a heat around them? What do you do with some, that arm? Some, everybody's a little bit different. They, some guys like to do that kind of stuff. Um, we've, we've got some uh, heated uh, gloves that we can put on guys to keep their hands warm, uh, those type of things. But... You know, I, a lot of times I see Kaminska goes back into the bathroom because that's the hot, that, I mean, it's, it's warm back in yeah. there. So um, he'll go back there and, and stay warm in between innings. So, yeah, it's just part of it, and it's part of it in the Midwest for sure. This well, and year. Emmett's an Illinois kid, so yeah. he probably, <clears throat> high school ball probably played in a lot of cold yeah. weather. Yeah, and it, it's, you know, it's, everybody's a little bit different with it. But once those guys, those guys have done a good job of not letting it affect them. Uh, Crypto King in our chat room wants you to talk about the Jersey retirements that are going to happen this Friday. Some some pretty big names in Husker baseball history. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it to have all those guys, all those legends back here and their families in the ballpark this weekend, and for our guys to be around them um, again. Just not only are they exceptional baseball players, um, were they here at Nebraska, and then all three of them making it to the big leagues. Uh, just who they are as people and, and leaders and, and what they've done for Nebraska baseball um, on and off the field. That, that's what makes those guys so special. And, you know, that, that's what, you know, those teams that, that they played on, uh, they were the best players and they were also the hardest workers. And that's, that's part of great culture. And, um, you know, just awfully, awfully thankful for all those guys, um, obviously having played with Shane and, and, um, and, Coached Alex and then and then coached under Darren. Uh, different little different relationships with all three of those guys. But going to be a special, special, special evening uh, Friday night, and and hopefully have a great crowd there to support them. Did you know Darren very well before you joined the staff here? No, you know what? Because uh, he I, was gone and playing by the time you. I had moved. never actually uh, met Darren in person until he hired me. Um, so we. Never really had crossed paths and uh, had, had just visited uh, on the phone prior to him interviewing me. And uh, so knew obviously who he was and what he had done. And, um, you know, he had, his, he had come back after they won the World Series in that fall of 2002 was the one year that I wasn't, it was, I was done playing and then I wasn't coaching that year. So we just never, never crossed paths. But um, obviously having a chance to coach under him uh, was a huge honor just kind of in awe of, of his career up to that point and, and just being able to learn from him on a day-to-day -day basis for three years was something that uh, was just invaluable for me. How long did it take you to be around Gordon to know that that's a pretty <clears throat> special player? Yeah, you could tell um, his, his first year was that 03 season. It, again, that was the year that I was away from the team. I just kept hearing the guys talk about how special this freshman was. And um, actually, let me, let me rewind. We went we went to go watch him play in high school. It was pretty evident at that point in time. Uh, but then when he came on campus, everybody was just, he just looked different physically than most freshmen coming in. Just so physical, so strong, um, great left-handed swing, you know, cannon for an arm. So you, you heard the buzz around, you know, fall camp of, of this freshman coming in. And um, obviously he went and performed really well as a freshman. And then having a chance to, to be with him every day as a coach for a couple of years, you could really just see why he was great. I mean, he wanted to be pushed. He wanted to be coached. Um, you know, he he was the hardest worker, the dirtiest guy at practice, best best lifter in the weight room. I mean, guy was took care of himself from a nutrition standpoint. I mean, he just did everything right. And some guys are just wired a little bit different. And there's a reason that he had the college career that he had, and then ended up being such a good professional player. Got a name building named after him too so this place means an awful lot to him yeah and super thankful for him and his wife jamie for their uh i mean just what they've done and, and darren and his wife jessica as well for that matter um you know just being big parts of of support you know off off the field for us and yeah the alex gordon facility is is something that's it's state of the art i mean it was built 10 years ago now it's hard to believe but um we can get an awful lot of work done in there when the weather doesn't cooperate was this something you pushed for to get this kind of a night happening? Yeah, you know, it, it kind of, I think maybe the idea of, of retiring the jersey maybe had been kicked around. But um, when I got back here in, in the summer of 19, after the dust had settled a little bit, I had had a conversation with Curtis Ledbetter, our director of ops, um, and our administration, and now Dennis LeBlanc, who's our baseball AD, just, you know, it, 
you don't want to leave people out when it comes to some of that stuff, but I think just it was the consensus and it has to go before a committee and everybody's got to approve it. It's just, hey, these guys are super deserving, and I think they're synonymous with – with Husker baseball, those three names. And certainly there's some that came before them that are huge names that went and played, you know, in the major leagues at times and, and even some afterwards and some guys that I played with as well. But, yeah, I, I was I was pretty adamant. Uh, and I knew Darren, um, you know, him being the head coach for eight years, that was never going to happen when he was the head coach. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to honor him right away and thought, you know what, Alex and Shane, th those guys need to be honored as well for what they've done. Their careers are, you know, are over and they're going in a different direction in their lives. So it'd be cool to get them and their families back. Huskers had not been to a College World Series until, and you were on that team, Shane was kind of the, the, the lead pin on that, the way he was able to pitch. And that some of our audience certainly saw him pitch, but to people that maybe didn't, maybe some of our younger listeners, what kind of competitor was Shane? Shane was a guy that had the the biggest intimidation factor you can possibly imagine for a five foot eight Hawaiian yeah. pitcher. Uh, I mean, he stood on top of the mound, and and there were even some games where he didn't have his best fastball. That the, the legend had it that he this guy throws so hard. And you know, back then we didn't have his. It was a radar gun. There was no track man. There was none of the the you know, and there was no social media, so word didn't spread. So I think the legend really really grew. Um, and he looked like he was seven foot tall on that mound. Just and, and that's the way he threw too. Just straight over the top and just straight downhill for a little guy. And five pitches at times that he threw, all for strikes. And just just ultimate, ultimately just very very competitive as well. And we didn't really want to be beat in any aspect. You know, we were roommates and we played video games. He wanted to, he wanted to kick your butt. He played ping pong. He wanted to kick your butt. And it's kind of one of those guys. So. Um, 20 and 0 in his career at home. I mean, that that's unfathomable to think about. Um, and you know, won the Friday night game in the 0-2 uh, Super Regional, and then closed out Game Three. How the heck does a guy from Hawaii get to Lincoln, Nebraska? <laughs> it's a great question. I mean, that that may be a question we need to ask uh, Coach Childers one day if we can get him on the show. But um, they there there was a contact out in Hawaii. Um, Pass along his name, and um, it just so happened that Nebraska, there for the first spring that Coach Van Horn and Coach Childers were here, they played in a tournament in Hawaii. So, talk about changing the trajectory of a program. <laughs> that that scheduling quirk. I mean, we haven't we've only played in Hawaii one other time since. Um, give gave them an opportunity to go watch him pitch and. I don't necessarily think they were wowed, to be honest, when they saw him, but they just kind of kept tabs on the, the numbers and said, you know what, we'll take a flyer on this guy. Sounds like he's, you know, he's got something that maybe you can't teach. And um, I think Coach, Coach Childers will, will laugh and tell you that, that Van Horn was kind of the one that pushed for him. And Childers said, hey, you're, they're going to laugh us out of the Big 12 if, <laughs> if we bring a five foot, five foot eight Hawaiian dude in here trying to throw on the weekends. And, um, I think we had the last laugh on that one. No doubt. Good stuff. It'll be Friday night before the game, folks. You want to be in your seats a little early for the Jersey retirements of three Husker baseball legends. Dorothy Lynch, homestyle, light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. Need to work a break in. Here are the numbers, 402-413-2400. Call or fire off a text. That is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. More with the coach coming up. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. One of the Nebraska Lottery's most explosively fun promotions is back. Cash Blast. Until April 18th, buy a 2x2 two two ticket, enter the voucher number, and you could win $5,000 or $500. If your winning voucher is from a 7-day draw ticket or a multiple of 7 ticket, your prize is doubled. There will be 7 weekly drawings and 14 total winners in Cash Blast. So play today. You'll have a blast. But that goes without saying. 2x2 two two top prize odds, 1 in 105,000. 
Swings at this pitch and launches it to left, and that ball is gone. Grand slam home run, Bryce Matthews. Breezy day in Manhattan. Hey, Husker fans, tune in tomorrow with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin as Nebraska baseball takes on Creighton in a midweek matchup. Pre-game coverage begins at 5.30 p.m. on the Huskers radio network. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance, more than Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. The 2023 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of June 2022. Duto Subaru in Lincoln and DutoSubaru.com. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. You ain't seen nothing. This is Ford Truck Month, America. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight. Like the Ford F-150 or the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger pickups. So get into Ford Truck Month and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock and ready for delivery today. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Husker fans, don't miss your chance to get a first look at new head coach Matt Rule and the 2023 Husker football team. Be in Memorial Stadium on Saturday, April 22nd for the annual Nebraska football red and white spring game presented by FNBO. Tickets are on sale now and are only $10 when purchased in advance and $20 on the day of the game. To secure your tickets today or for more information, visit Huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. Husker students on the debate team and Bateman competition public relations team earned national championships this past year, marking a first for each program. The debate team claimed victory with one of the youngest teams in the country, while the Bateman competition public relations team won their championship by building a PR campaign for the Lymphoma Research Foundation. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan, townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone, so it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that, which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. 
Insurance that fits just right. See shelter agent Mike Shepard or Craig Kerr in Lincoln or agent Jeff Martinez in Omaha today. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It's our baseball show for the week. The head coach with us until the top of the hour. If you want to be a part of it, 402-413-2400 with either a call or a text. Text for you, Coach. How do you prepare your players' approach to the plate, late game situations with runners on base? Well, it, it kind of just depends. Um, we have a lot of, of data um, available to us now, some, some more than others. It depends on what team you're facing. Um, but we have some data available that gives us an idea of maybe some tendencies of, of pitches and certain counts and those type of things. So those are some conversations that are had at times with guys. Uh, other times, you kind of just have to pick your spots. Just know, hey, this guy probably wants more information. This guy, probably you don't need to say anything to him. Uh, more often than not, you just kind of trust your, your preparation and trust your players in those situations and just say, hey, go go do what you do. You know, So there, there's different uh, ways to, to look at it with each, each guy, but um, we have we have information and guys have tendencies at times and sometimes they're just um, you know working on an approach that, that we've practiced. You've had a lot of bases loaded situations. You had one in the Omaha game and you had, as you mentioned earlier in the program, you had three yeah. different times yesterday. You had bases loaded with less than two outs. Yeah, the uh, and that, that's actually an uh, kind of a statistical oddity for a team that has been elite offensively. Is we we just. Some of those bases loaded situations, we just haven't really been that great, um, and you know, and striking out more than we should. I think it's just more of a situation of um, we do such a great job as an offense of just kind of passing that baton down the line and kind of that just setting up the next guy. Well, now the table's set. There's nowhere else for the the, the guys to go at times. So. You know that what you what your players have to realize, and what we've talked to our guys about is when the bases are loaded, all the pressure is on the pitcher. You know, so he he's got he's the one that's got to be perfect, not you at the plate. So, um, yeah, probably just a, a situation of trying to do a little bit too much um, in those spots. But again, you got to it's a it's a good problem to have when you load the bases a lot, and and um, you know we've gotten an awful lot of big hits along the way. Top ten in the country in batting average right now. I mean, some of your numbers are offensively just have been off the charts. Yeah, I mean, uh, offensively, what what more can you ask for? I mean, from from what we're doing, um, eight and a half to nine runs a game, and um, thirty home runs, I believe, already. Slugging percentage, on base percentage. Um, you know, I think we had an entire starting lineup a um, couple days there, where every single guy was hitting three hundred with a four hundred on base percentage and um, power up and down the lineup. So we we've. Offensively, I got no complaints there. I mean, we've we've really retooled that that offense, and um, Coach Marcuso and, and Coach Harvell have done a tremendous job there with that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, there's there's places to nitpick, I guess. Um, you know, and ultimately, you know, when you give up ten, our job is to score eleven as an offense. So, um, a lot of good things there. First Interstate Bank built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank. Let's go to the phones. Let's go down to Kansas. Tom, you're going to lead us off tonight. Good evening. Hey, how's it going there, Sharpie and Coach Bolt? Hey, Tom, how you doing? Ah, oh, good. Um, hey, I, I really wanted to uh, give you props. Uh, Coach Bolt, me and you are uh, pretty much the same age, and you, I always called you my, my Pete Rose uh, Husker baseball. <laughs> okay, hopefully, hopefully all the good things that Pete Rose did, right? <laughs> yeah. On the baseball oh, field. Oh, on the baseball field. Gotcha. Perfect. Hey, that's a compliment. I'll right. take that. Thank you. That's right. We, actually, my brother is the one that gave you the nickname Nails. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a Lenny Dykstra nickname right there. Yeah. Old Nails Dykstra. Yeah, that's right. And, well, that was, before, that was before he – well, that was after he knew Lenny Dykstra. Gotcha. But, uh, hey – A little comment that I heard on social media, and I kind of tried to emphasize this, and maybe you can say this better, about how to navigate midweek games with the importance of winning those games in, in, in coordinates with the RPI and 
what it does to you when you lose games like the game you lost against Omaha and the game we lost against Nichols. And just especially with the pitching staff, the rotation and and who who you can trust and and how do you how do you navigate that? And thanks for your time guys and go big red. You guys are doing great. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, I, I alluded to it a little bit earlier in the show last week was a bit of a unique week and that the schedule was a little bit up in the air um but at the time the, the week was looking like it was a tuesday thursday friday saturday sunday um you know so there's that's a lot of games in a short amount of time uh so you know garza was he was throwing really really well and we hated to take him out but we also you know knew that we had a bunch of other games left in the week and you know we just need we needed some guys to step up so there there is a balance there on the midweeks of like trying to see some young guys and, and maybe trying to see some guys that you haven't seen a lot of that who knows that they might step up, you know, we need some guys to step up. I mean, we, we've got some veteran guys that haven't pitched as well as they're capable of pitching. Um, and, and ultimately we're not going to get to where we want to get to unless those guys get going. Um, but we also have some young guys that we need to see as well, you know, and they're here for a reason. And, and you know, you're not just throwing guys out there just thinking that, Hey, well, we don't really care much about this game. We'll see how so and so does. I mean, that's not really the way it works. I mean, I'm myself, my my coaching staff. I mean, we're trying to win every game that we play. So you know, there is that delicate balance there of of um, you know, hey, we're going to get some guys some some experience and some work, and then also going to win the game. I mean, and we you know, that being said, I mean, Shea Shanneman came in through 60 pitches in that game against Omaha. We had a lead there, and and uh, and we just weren't able to finish it off with some veterans on the mound. So. Um, yeah, we were we were playing to win, and and we we're going to play to win every game. And and sometimes it sets you back when certain guys throw more than you expect them to throw, and they can't come back for a couple of days. And um, and you know, there's at times there's some decisions that have to be made as far as like, well, we need to get this guy some work. And ultimately, what you hope to have happen is you hope to you know maybe have a comfortable enough lead at times where you can where you can go throw some guys in some less pressure situations. And we've had some of those situations throughout the year, too. So um, it's a little bit of a delicate balance on midweeks, um, especially with conference coming up now, uh, how important those games are. So, you know, we're very well aware of, of how important each and every one is and, and RPI and all that stuff. I mean, ultimately, you, you just got to win. Let's head to uh, Omaha next. And Jerry, mm -hmm. good evening. Jerry, you're up with Coach Bolt. Uh, good evening, guys. How are you guys doing? Great. How are you? I'm great. Um, so, Coach Bold, I was just going to ask you kind of an overall philosophy question about how you uh, maybe handle a situation where you got a really good player that might go into a slump or not perform maybe as as usual, and like, uh, what kind of considerations do you think about whether it's a personal issue or? Uh, just a physical issue or or how do you how do you break that down yeah that's a good question i mean because that that's you know baseball um it, it's such a mental game and, and there's a lot of a lot of failure uh, but a lot of opportunity that comes from that failure as well and ultimately what you like to see is uh, what are guys attitudes like in the struggle um how how, how do they handle that struggle um, and are they good teammates or do they, do they let it affect their their defense or if they're a pitcher do they let it affect um, you know the next at bat or the next pitch um, and, and certainly just having those relationships with our, with the guys and just getting a feel for what what's going on what makes them tick um, you try to just use different philosophies for different guys some guys really kind of want you to challenge them um, and some guys probably need just a, a pat on the back and an arm put around them I mean, we, we have great um, sports psychologists here on campus as well that are there to lend an ear to our guys and to give them some skills to, to cope with some things, um, you know, on and off the field as well. So uh, there, there's a lot of different things that go into consideration with that. And certainly guys that um, have a track record may get a little bit more of a leash as well when it comes to some, some struggles. And, and um, you know, ultimately our jobs as coaches um, is to win games and put the best team on the field so 
we take all those things into consideration. I mean, one thing I do make clear to our players is um, I can't really take their wants, needs, or desires or feelings into play when it comes to decisions to be made to win baseball games. Um, and our guys understand that. They know we have our, their best interest in art, but ultimately um, we got to do what's best for the team. So it's, there's a fine line there. Um, there's a, definitely a personal side to it um, that, that we take into account in terms of, you know, what maybe guys, some guys are dealing with, and that we help them navigate that um, in those instances. Jerry, appreciate the phone call. Brandon from Omaha on our text line for you. Coach, Friday I was watching Coach Christie trying to see how he calls the game. Does he plug in the pitch to a remote that goes to the catcher and then relayed to the pitcher? How does that exactly work? Yeah, it's it's new this year, um, and it, it's really – it has to happen with the pitch clock the way that it is. Like, just – kind of the old traditional way of putting signs down and shaking off and all those things really just is kind of it's tough to do because you have you only have a certain amount of time to throw the pitch you got 20 seconds to throw the pitch so um, what it is it's a system it has a keypad uh, coach Christie types the numbers in and they represent a pitch or a pick play or you know something like that um, and it goes directly from his keypad to a wristband on the pitcher and then also on the catcher and we also have the two middle infielders, the center fielder, and the first baseman typically have one on as well. So um, those guys all know what pitch is coming, so they can kind of move accordingly uh, when it comes to it. Um, but, yeah, it's something new. It's new technology. It's something that was actually uh, – it was went into effect last year that was able to happen, but not a lot of teams had it. Um, it also helps where now there's no signs be, being put down with runners on base, so it's – there's really nothing to pick up on when it comes to getting in the catcher's legs or being able to tell, you know, a, a pattern of signs at second base. So um, there's just a system in place now uh, where they can look on the wrist and it, it gives them a series of numbers. So, folks, if you're seeing the guys look down at their hands, that's what they're what they're doing. Brand, appreciate it. that's a great question there, folks. It's time now for our Husker baseball trivia contest, brought to you by. The Nebraska Lottery, your chance to receive $100 in scratch tickets from the Nebraska Lottery. Limit one winner per household for this season. Texas, your guests. Our text line number 402-413-2400. On Friday, Emmett Olson was so close to a complete game shutout, albeit a seven-inning game. Who was the last Husker to throw a complete game shutout? You have the answer, Texas, 402-413-2400. Husker Dan, Russ, hang on. We'll get to your calls next. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. For the fifth straight year, the University of Nebraska system is a top 100 patent earning institution. NU system researchers were granted 43 patents in 2021, with UNL researchers named as inventors on 25 of these patents. Husker patents include three projects with partners at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and six patents for a surgical robot developed by faculty in the College of Engineering. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. 
Woodhouse Mazda is redefining car buying so you can shop whenever you want, wherever you want. Shop our inventory, apply for financing, and start your deal online at woodhouseplacemazda.com or woodhousemazda.com. With our lineup of new Mazda CUVs like the Mazda CX-5 or a Mazda certified pre-owned vehicle, we have a vehicle to fit the needs of your lifestyle. Our two convenient locations and our commitment to excellence make Woodhouse Mazda the easy choice. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynix has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, see why 2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It is our Husker Baseball Radio Hour. Head coach Will Bolt with us. We just asked our Nebraska Lottery Trivia c Question of the Week. The last Complete game shutout by a Husker. Some great guesses. Cade Povich, Zach Kroenke, Shane, who we talked about earlier in the program. Uh, a couple of Cade Poviches in there. And the correct answer was Shea Shanneman. And Sam in Omaha, a couple of them got, a couple of you guessed Shea, but Sam in Omaha, the first to guess it. You remember that game. That was about a year ago. Yeah, it was a quick one uh, against Northwestern State. And uh, got 
cruised through it and didn't really have to throw from the stretch much at all. Uh, I can't remember how many hits he gave up. It wasn't many. There wasn't much hard contact that day. He was really good for that one. Hey, co folks, Cash Blast from the Nebraska Lottery is back up until April 18th. Buy a two-by-two -two ticket and enter to be one of 14 winners of $5,000 or $500. Details at anylottery.com. Two-by-two top prize odds, one in $105,000. We'll have a trivia question for you each week with the coach here. Let's go to the phone. Let's go up to West Point. Oscar Dan, you're up with the head coach. Good evening. Hey, Greg and Coach Bowl. How's it going? Great, Dan. Appreciate you coming on. Good. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, I got a couple questions on the pitching. Um, in Coach Bowl, I know you call pitches out of the dugout and everything. I know how that all works out with your catcher and stuff. But um, I want to do you emphasize with your pitchers on on a certain pitch? I mean, do you go with a fastball slider, change up? And what, and, and what is the hardest pitch to hit? Um, I, well, it depends on the hitter. I mean, we have some information there um, that gives hot and cold zones for – for each hitter in their lineup, um, and that's kind of where we try to attack, but also taking into account um, <clears throat> what our pitcher's strength are as well. So, um, you know, that that's really, you know, the, the gist of it, plus the game situation. I mean, the score, how many guys are on base, that, that all that kind of stuff goes into play uh, with that kind of stuff. But uh, Coach Christie calls pitches in the dugout. Um, he talks to the catchers. Um, you know, in a Bluetooth headset, he also was able to have, obviously has those conversations with the pitcher and the catcher, and there's times where the pitcher uh, calls their own pitches. Um, so it just it just kind of depends on the situation. But um, for me personally, I, the, the hardest pitch for me to hit was the slider. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm a coach now, is that the right-handed slider was, was tough to hit. So, um, yeah, I, it just depends on the situation and, and um, you know, what the strengths and weaknesses are of the hitter and also of our pitcher. Dan, appreciate the call. Folks, buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Need to get our final break in. Russ in Lexington, hang on. We'll get to your call next. Husker fans, don't miss your chance to get a first look at new head coach Matt Rule and the 2023 Husker football team. Be in Memorial Stadium on Saturday, April 22nd for the annual Nebraska football red and white spring game presented by FNBO. Tickets are on sale now and are only $10 when purchased in advance and $20 on the day of the game. To secure your tickets today or for more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. That's my name with Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe, I think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging. I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Nickelodeon Ultra. 
The perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. UNL has been awarded over $14 million by the U.S. Department of Commerce to expand robotics research and teaching spaces, part of a $25 million award given to the state of Nebraska to advance robotics research. The funding will allow the university to educate and train the next generation of Nebraska workers, entrepreneurs, and innovators for careers of the future. So we'll have a few minutes left for the head baseball coach. Huskers tomorrow night up in Omaha to take on the Creighton Blue Jays. Six o'clock first pitch. Pre-game coverage begins at 5.30. Let's go back to the phones out to Lexington. Russ, good evening. You're up with the head coach. Hey, great to talk to you, coach. And, Greg, you are talking a little while ago about Shane Comey Day. I sat in the stands at old Buck Belser Field when he was pitching one day along the first baseline, and, and to watch his fastball was incredible. When it hit the pitch or the catcher's mid, it just... That was a sweet sound. <laughs> Leads me to you, Coach Bolt. You made the catch on the final out against Rice in that Super Regional, didn't you? I did. I sure did. Well, I, I just was confused because it's in, as soon as it hit your, your uh, glove, it just threw up in the air, and I'm going, oh, you didn't hang on to it long enough. <laughs> but I guess I was thinking about the, the catch rule in football and the receiver. So that's uh, something I learned. Now, uh, I wanted to go on to you, Greg. You and Nate... And also, Ben, get very excited in doing baseball. But I'll be honest with you, uh, Greg, the most excited I think I ever heard you on a call was two years ago in the Maryland game when Coach Bolt got thrown out. <laughs> I was fired up that, that day. <laughs> that was, I just sat and I laughed about that. <laughs> that was a, uh, And I laugh every time I think about it. So that's all I had to add tonight. So great talking to you. Thanks, Russ. Thanks, Russ. Appreciate the phone call. One more text for you here before we get – cut you loose rick in omaha says coach so excited about this year's team great job by everyone i'm not sure how i have ever seen so many hit batters both for us and the opposition is that your observation if so is it just something that's happening or is it something else contributing to that yeah i had this question last week too i don't really know how to explain it um it has it's been a point of emphasis for us offensively to make sure we anchor down in the box and you know, you're not trying to get hit by the ball, but, it, you know, a lot of teams are trying to pitch us inside because we've got some guys that can hit for power. So, um, yeah, and then obviously uh, on the mound, there's going to be some of that too. We like to pitch inside. Uh, you want to pitch inside with purpose. If you hit a guy, you know, with a fastball uh, kind of in the arm or, you know, uh, just kind of brush him back, that's one thing. But missing – Missing bad misses where you hit them in the back or you hit them with a breaking ball, um, you know, that you just kind of lose. Those are ones that are frustrating. So uh, definitely, but definitely want to limit those. But certainly there's going to be a little bit of that when you pitch inside. Rick, appreciate the text. Uh, thanks for listening to the program tonight. Big week. Creighton tomorrow, Illinois Conference. Here we go. This is, this is what you get ready fired up for. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're all big, and, and we're, we're excited about the, the challenges ahead. And, um, Go play down at at uh, Great Ballpark tomorrow night against against a good Creighton team, and um, you know got got to get back on the right track. And um, you know we we feel like we've got a good team, we've got a fun team, we got a bunch of guys that really care. Um, you just get you know continue to get better and better each week, each day, um, and then that starts tomorrow night. Illinois got a lot of firepower back from last year's team. I know they won a road series at Southern Miss. They must be a pretty competent team. Yeah, no, they're they're always they're well coached. They always have a bunch of good athletes, a bunch of guys in the lineup that scare you. Um, they got a, a couple of good frontline arms as well. So yeah, it's going to be a challenging week. Um, we need to make sure that uh, that we're ready to go, which I know we will be, and um, you know get some get get some get some W's. All right, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Head coach Will Bull with us here. Our Monday, Monday weekly show with the head coach. Sports Audi Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Oscars and Blue Jays tomorrow night, 6 o'clock first pitch on the air with pregame at 5.30. Thanks to Cole for steering the ship. We'll talk to you tomorrow night from Omaha. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Looking for a car buying experience tailored to you? Start with Woodhouse, a trusted partner for automotive needs and a proud member of the Nebraska community. With 18 brands and 21 sales and service locations, our dedicated Woodhouse team is ready to provide you a convenient and seamless transaction from anywhere. Whether purchasing, selling, or servicing, experience the difference with Woodhouse, the official auto dealer of Nebraska Athletics. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. See agent Matt Moorhead or Joanne Shamanek in Lincoln or Scott Jeffers in McCook today. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you with a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a very big mistake. Hey, Joe, you think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have your underground utilities parked before you start digging? John, that's just for big projects. <laughs> Actually, it's for any digging project. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Joe. You found your electric line. Remember, safe digging always begins with a free.